Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg. Join me today for the Fitchburg Fire Department. It's our public education dude, Adam Dorn. Dude, Thanks, what's up? Not much. How are you? I am full of it today, so uh, this should be an interesting segment uh, at best. You bring the best out of me, Dorn. That's all I'm saying. Uh, hey, first and foremost, I just want to say thank you. Uh, you have been just on a roll this year with bringing in some awesome guests, so um, I really appreciate it. If you haven't had a chance to go check out the library this year of uh, all the great videos uh, and interviews that we've done, we've had just a like great, great lineup this year, and it's because of that guy right there. It's Dorn. Well, and uh, today, yeah, we appreciate it, Doran. Um, let's, uh, we're, we're getting close here to our uh, time change. And uh, that does uh, bring up a great time to really uh, think about changing uh, your smoke detectors, um, carbon monoxide detectors. Uh, and why, why do we associate it with, with the time change? So uh, I don't even know how long ago it was, but uh, a few years ago, um, the time change actually took place roughly six months apart. So it was a it was a great thing for the fire service to latch on to, to say, hey, when you change your clocks, let's change the batteries in the smoke detectors as well, because you're, a lot of times people would change the batteries in their clocks at the same time to make sure that they wouldn't stop on them unexpectedly. So it was just an easy way for people to remember to make sure they always had working smoke detectors. Um, now with some of the changes that have happened with daylight savings times where they kind of push it back and move it move it around a little bit it's not quite six months but it's still a great way to remember to change the batteries in your smoke detectors why in this day and age why why are we still dealing with the batteries why are we still you know shouldn't there be an easier technology out there why isn't this wi-fi yet <laughs> yeah so they your smoke detectors still need some sort of a power to make them operate. And whether that's hardwired in most of the newer uh, smoke detectors in your homes and the newer homes, they're all interconnected. Um, so that allows them to kind of work off of all of them work off of one power source. But if that power source is interrupted, say the power goes out, you still need the batteries in there or some sort of a power supply in the smoke detectors to make sure that they will work when the power does go up. So that's why we still need these, these batteries. That's why it's not all Wi-Fi. Um, that's just one of the, the newer technologies that's available, but it does not solve all of our problems that we may face. And what about the ones that do um, have that direct power? Um, you know, they all come with a battery backup mostly um, um, because of that, uh, that very reason. Exactly. Um, and that, that's exactly what it is, is that if one of them, if the power does go out, they still want to make sure that there's power in that um, smoke detector so it operates. Because sometimes the power may go out because of a fire, but we there may not be enough smoke to set up the smoke detector before the power goes off. Uh, I like the interconnectivity uh, idea uh, because if one goes off, they all go off. And uh, it wasn't a technology that was affordable in uh, homes, uh, but definitely. Uh, it's getting there. It's still uh, pretty pricey. I've been actually pricing them out because I I'm anticipating here. Um, I've been trying to. I think I've got still got a couple alarms that are probably original house date, but I've got different alarms around those. So I'm working through it. But um, why would it be important to even consider? You know, and I know we all know on the surface why it's important that maybe to put in one of those systems. But um, you know, how long does it take smoke um, to maybe travel? Let's say fire starts in the basement uh, to maybe a second floor or third floor, whatever the case may be. Yeah, great question, right? Um, so if we are living in a perfect world and when we go to bed, let's just say most fires happen at night when we're sleeping, right? And if we're in, in bed sleeping, we have our bedroom door closed. If we have a, a door at the top or the bottom of the stairs, that door is closed. Now we have a whole nother level that the smoke needs to go through, let's say it's the main level. So you're sleeping on the second floor, you have the main level of your home, and then you probably have a, a door to the stairway that goes to the basement. So that door is closed. And if the fire starts in the back corner of your basement away from the stairs, it has to travel all of that distance to make the smoke detector go off upstairs. It has to go through at least two doors, your bedroom door and the door at the top of the steps, plus all the other space. So 
when they're interconnected, you get notification right away that, hey, there's a smoke detector that has been activated somewhere in your house. You may not know where it is, but you will at least know something is going on. And by having them interconnected, it gives you more time, more opportunity to get out of a house. Um, in the past, they used to say you'd have 20 minutes to get out of a house in what we call legacy construction, where two by fours were actually two inches by four inches, and there was nothing else, you know, they weren't glued together and they weren't, they weren't pressed together with gusset plates and all that other stuff. Nowadays, in our construction today, we have about three minutes to get out of the house once the fire starts. That's that is uh, so just amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, absolutely. And and I appreciate you explaining it because I think it is a real, uh, real problem in a lot of homes that, you know, even if they're not interconnected, if you have one in the basement and I'm just thinking I have a tri-level, that could be, let's see, one, two, three, four doors closed. <laughs> Um, that I might never hear uh, any of the alarms as it would make it up uh, to uh, my house or up to where we sleep. And everybody's kind of in the same area. So it would be a kind of a tough thing. Let's uh, turn our attention to the 10 year replacement plan, something that's come up in the last uh, several years. And if you've uh, sat through one of our interviews, we've talked about this in the past, but uh, why this 10 year mark now of uh, these things need to just be totally replaced and put in a new uh, smoke detector? Yeah, after about 10 years, the smoke detectors kind of reach the end of their life cycle. They are always working. That's one of the reasons why they have that power supply. They're always working. They're always making sure that there's no smoke in the air. And if there is, it will alarm. Um, one of the other things to think about is that if you put a smoke detector up, right, and you never do any kind of maintenance to it, which we're supposed to, which I'm sure, you know, to be honest, probably the majority of the people don't do the maintenance that they're supposed to to keep keep their smoke detectors uh, operating properly. So we need to make sure that they're being cleaned. That could be could be in multiple different ways of doing it, but whatever the manufacturer recommendation is, that's what we're supposed to do. But if we don't clean them and we don't maintain them and test them that they are operating, we need to make sure that they're replaced after 10 years because it just, they get to the end of the life cycle and they need to be, you know, you have to put a new one up. It, it's reached the end of the life cycle. It, it's served its purpose for the time. Yeah, I think uh, I was thinking technology too is probably changes, you know, as frequently as it does now. Uh, so uh, certainly, I'm thinking in the next five years, you know, most of them will probably be a Wi-Fi or some uh, some connected way. Certainly, you always have the opportunity to buy smoke detectors of the original state, but um, not all smoke detectors are made alike. Uh, you can get your your basic smoke detector, but there are other combination uh, smoke detectors out there. And it, you used to think, well, carbon monoxide smoke detector, but uh, that that's even increased more to like explosive or material, I don't know, gases, I guess you would say that um, I can cause that. So first, what's out there in the market that you've seen, Doran? Uh, what do we have for options uh, for besides just smoke detector? Yeah, so there, there's the photoelectric uh, smoke detector, the, there's the ionization smoke detector. Those are the two main smoke detectors. They basically work the same. One works better with a smoldering fire, one works better with a free burning fire. Um, the difference between the two of them is pretty, pretty small that it really doesn't make a difference which one you use. They will both work appropriately. Um, but th with that, the smoke detectors are being coupled with the uh, carbon monoxide detectors. Um, so you have a combination carbon monoxide smoke detector. There's also standalone carbon monoxide detectors and there are carbon monoxide and explosive gas detectors. So those are the three real big ones that we've seen out there. I'm sure there's some other ones, but those are the three most prevalent ones that, that are available to the public. All right, Dord, final message. Make me want to put up a smoke alarm in every single bedroom of my house, go. All right, so think about this. If you have the um, fire that happens in your basement, like we talked about before, you're on the second level of your home, in order for the smoke detector to go off in your bedroom, it has to go through at least two doors, maybe four doors by the time it gets there. But if you make sure that you sleep with your bedroom door closed, make sure you put a smoke detector on the inside of your bedroom and out in the hallway outside of your, in your sleeping area, outside of the bedrooms. 
You want one on every level of your home, including your basement, at a minimum. That way, it doesn't matter where the fire starts, you will get some sort of a notification, whether they are interconnected or not. They all need to be there, they all need to be working. Make sure you test your smoke alarms at least once a month to make sure they're working properly, because if you don't, they may not. You may not get out of a house fire or a fire that out of your house where there's a fire inside. And the biggest thing, make sure they just plain old work. Make sure the batteries are in there. Don't take the batteries out because, you know, if mom or dad burnt something on the stove again, or maybe the kids burned something on the stove and they were trying to cook and they're learning to cook. Don't take the smoke alarms, the batteries out of the smoke alarms. Make sure they're in there. If there's newer technology out there where you can leave it, batteries in there, you can hush the smoke detector, leave it in place, it will still operate as needed. And most importantly, this weekend, when, uh, when you uh, test your smoke alarms and you check your clocks to change your time on them, test your smoke alarms as well. Because that alone could save your life and can get you out of your house so that you can stay see the rest of your family and make sure that they know you're doing what you need to do to stay safe. Yeah, and especially if you have kids, you're setting the example for the kids uh, in the future. So uh, doing that just show, gives them an idea. Well, I guess my parents always did it. So uh, I, I suppose I better do it too. Uh, Dorn, thank you so much for all the information. Uh, certainly you've got some information up on your website, uh, at the fire department's website, fitforwi.gov. And uh, Adam, we'll look forward to having you back on real soon. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, Jeremy. Have a good day. You too, Adam Dorn, Fitchburg Fire Department, our uh, public uh, educator, and uh, so much more for, for everything he does for us here at Fact TV. All right, we'll take a quick break. More to come. You're watching Talking Fitchburg.